For all its problems, 2011's Homefront introduced a compelling Red Dawn-esque story, and revisiting it in an open-world first-person shooter format sounded promising. But Homefront has let me down again. There are some genuinely good ideas in the revolution, but nearly every one of them comes with a big, fat, hairy butt. Thanks to tedious gameplay, a terrible story, and a general lack of polish, Homefront the Revolution fails to make finishing its 20-hour campaign feel worthwhile. Where the revolution does deliver is in its world building. The backstory of a North Korea-occupied United States remains present in every part of developer Dan Buster's version of Philadelphia. From bombed-out homes to historic landmarks converted into propaganda-covered re-education centers, the authoritarian atmosphere is ever-present. When I did finally manage to convince the citizens of each district to rise up against their oppressors, the change was palpable, and not just because a decent amount of the neighborhood was now on fire. It's a shame, then, that such a well-crafted world is squandered on such a ponderous and uninspired plot. The story of Homefront the Revolution is nothing more than a string of forgettable mission objectives sewn together with cliches pulled from the big book of military shooter tropes, and presented by a cast of characters who spend all of their time yelling over one another with groan-worthy one-liners. Think you can joke about killing like it's nothing? Hey, Doc, last time I took the moral high ground, I brought a sniper rifle with me. But I always said there was another way. A non-violent way. I have a dream. Dream on. While there are plenty of discussions meant to make us ponder the fine line between freedom fighter and terrorist, any weight these moments might have had is lost when our boring, silent protagonist silently nods and blindly agrees to blow up the next power station, drone factory, or whatever else the Resistance bigwigs happen to point him at. The good news is that blowing up military police stations isn't inherently awful, it's just extremely repetitive. You arrive in a district and blow up enough trucks and fuel tanks with homemade bombs strapped to RC cars to inspire the population to rise up and take back their neighborhood. There's some rioting, a plot-based story mission or two, and then it's off to the next district to do it all over again. And again, and again, until Homefront just sort of... ends. And you can't go back to finish anything you may have missed, even if you wanted to. These repetitive sabotage missions are a familiar combination of both first-person stealth and shooting. Neither mechanic is worth writing home about, gunplay feels sluggish when compared to Homefront's finger-twitching contemporaries, and sneaking through alleys and checkpoints is fun for a bit, but gets old pretty fast. Homefront does distinguish itself from other, quote, realistic military shooters in that you're able to carry more than the standard two or three guns, thanks to the on-the-fly weapon conversion system. It's a lore-friendly solution to a common obstacle with some very cool animations, but mechanically there's no real difference between this and just letting us carry more weapons. What makes combat extra frustrating is a surprising number of bugs. Enemies will frequently spawn on top of you as you're walking around the world, or may disappear entirely as you move around them. One of my personal favorites is the checkpoint save system, which on multiple occasions respawned me with my weapon holstered in the center of a large group of enemies. Now this one was extra fun because with no option to restart the mission or generate a custom save, my only options were to fight my way through or start the whole game over again. There's also the co-op resistance mode, where squads of up to four players can tackle missions set in the various districts around Philadelphia. However, with only six missions available to play, I was confused as to why the resistance mode includes a huge set of unlockable customization options. While exploring the world is a bit more fun with other people, I can't imagine wanting to play these missions more than a couple of times each. Though its open world has some great aesthetic choices, ultimately all of Homefront the Revolution's elements feel repetitive, unpolished, or downright unnecessary. While it has a lot of interesting ideas, Homefront the Revolution fails to deliver a satisfying or even fully functional shooter experience. For more on Homefront, stick with IGN.